Hello everyone, how are you doing today? I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an ASUS laptop. This one is an ASUS VivoBook 15. The specific model is an K513E model. And in this video I'm going to go over how you can open it up, how you can replace the keyboard. Because it is kind of complicated to replace it and lots of people take it to the shop and the shop always tell them, no, you got to replace the palm rest. Or they give them like a really high price. And it's not really that expensive to do it and it takes a lot of time about one hour maybe for you guys to do it at home you can follow this video step by step to replace your keyboard this keyboard comes with a backlight a uh, client tried to put a some kind of sticker and try to put it with a razor blade cut on between them and cut the keyboard and that's not fixable so we have ordered a new keyboard so you can get your keyboard i'll try to get the link for you guys for the new keyboard and you can buy yourself the and it comes with a backlight i'm going to show you guys how to install the new keyboard and the backlight so first thing first we need to take it apart and i'm going to go on step by step how you can do that tool that you're going to be needing is a screwdriver set i'll be using an iFixit screwdriver set as they have one of the best bits out there you're going to be using a phillips i believe let's just hold on this one if you get a pro set, you get an opening tools and some tweezers. If not, grab yourself a guitar pick. And metallic guitar picks are really suitable to opening cases and covers. Let me find mine. There we go. So grab yourself this one and the screwdriver set. First thing first, you want to power off the laptop. You want to flip it upside down. And you want to grab the bit Phillips number one from this tool set. And we're going to start removing all the screws on the bottom cover and keep them in different piles if they're different sizes but i believe they're using the same size screws you're going to find that in a second they are using a short screws on the front row so keep the front row screws in one pile and the mid back on a different pile also if you guys like my video if my videos are helping you guys out you can support the channel by clicking the like and subscribe I really appreciate it. It helps and motivates me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in the comment area. Alright, so the short the short screws are the one in the front. The medium screws are the side ones. The mid one in here is the longest one. So let's see the one in the back end. This one is the longest screw too. The back corner should be the again the medium size. So the only Two long screws are these two right here, the medium size and the short size. Once we remove all the screws, now we're gonna grab the opening tool and we're gonna remove the bottom cover. You wanna stick the guitar pick between the bottom and top cover and you just wanna twist it. I'm sorry about my voice, I have a little cold, so I'm trying to make the video for you guys even with the cold. So we're gonna peel it off just Twisted. You want to hear some clicking. That's what you want to hear. You want to do this all around to the back corner. Take it right there. Once you did most of them, now you want to grab the front end where the opening is. And you want to just wiggle it around. It will come out pretty easy. So I'm just going to wiggle it around, lift it up, and it will release itself. And there we have it. So with this on hand, now we need to remove everything here because the keyboard is right underneath this whole motherboard. We're going to start by removing the battery first, by removing this black metal bracket right over here. We got two black screws and one, one chrome screw right there. So go ahead and remove these screws. And put them in one side. Now, to remove the battery, you first you need to push this metal bracket backward towards this Wi-Fi card about until it clears the white cover. And then you want to grab yourself a plastic, do not put anything metal underneath. You want to put it under the cable jack and you want to lift it upward. So, there we go. Now, to remove the battery, remove the screw right over here. Lift up the battery. There's one more screw by the fan that holds it. Now we're gonna lift up the battery. 
you gotta grab a tweezer, a curved tweezer, preferably. Remove the Kapton tape, I mean the gaffer's tape from the Wi-Fi cable right there. You don't need to put it on. And bring the, untangle the cables and remove your battery. Next, we need to unplug the trackpad by lifting up this lock upward 90 degree and pull back the jack, the cable. Same thing for the keyboard flex. You want to lift up this jack 90 degree upward and then lift up 45 degree and pull it back the flex cable. Same thing for this bridge cable for the USB. Remove from the back side the black cover and you want to pull it back. All right, let's go ahead and remove the Wi-Fi cable. So just grab the Wi-Fi cables and bring it up like this and untangle them all the way towards the hinges. And remove the two screw for the fan, one in this corner and one in here. Remove the four screw for the CPU. We are you have to repaste it when you remove this one. It's a good idea to do it anyway. So remove the four screw for the heatsink and lift it up. And you need to unplug the jack for the fan. Just pull from the side, wiggle it around, and it will disconnect itself. You need to, we're gonna clean up the old thermal paste and we're gonna put the new thermal paste. No, this one has a little adhesive. So bring it up like that. You don't need to disconnect it from here. First, we're gonna remove the four screws for the hinge. Okay. Next, we need to lift up this hinge upward. Bring it up and fold it backward. Remove one screw for the USB ports here. Remove the USB port. Now we need to remove the flex cable for the LCD. Remove the tape over. Just bring it, fold it backward. And you need to slide it back. So it slide it backward and has a little adhesive, pull it out. Has a little grounding on the hinges, so remove the four screw on this side of the hinge. So there we have it. We have removed the four screws on the other hinge. Now we need to lift up this hinge right here. Just fold it back. Once we have this one, we can just lift up the hub rest with the whole motherboard and remove the screen from the bottom. You're going to put the screen on one side. Now we need to remove the motherboard. First, we need to remove the backlight cable right here. So lift it up, bring it here. Let me double check, make sure my backlight cable, it is long enough just the way it is right in here. It comes from here, folds and goes right there. So yeah, so you just wanna double check every step. All right, now we need to disconnect the the speaker cables right in here, pull by the jack, pull it backward. The motherboard has a one screw right there, two screws right there. Remove the two screws, three screws for the motherboard. The heatsink is not necessary to be removed, I believe, but it is a good idea to remove and repaste so you don't bend it while you try to lift it up. So lift it up, bring it up, and remove the motherboard. There's the other RAM solder at the back end. So we only have one RAM dim in here. So put this one to one side. So there we have the keyboard. So let's grab the old, key the new keyboard. Make sure the, the cable orientation, everything is in the same place. So, so if I fold it like that, it is the same. So there we have it. All right. We need to peel off this flex cable because we need this isolating plastic right here. Once we remove it, yeah. 
you need to peel off this one here so peel it off don't worry if you rip it nothing's gonna happen as long as you put it in the same place just be careful with it there we go put that one to one side now we need to remove this um, bracket is a metal sheet that goes over the keyboard we need to remove it to remove it you need a little chisel tool or uh, you'll be using uh, this metal chisel i'll try to get link for all the materials that i use you either have to chop off the rabbits right on top of this thing this metal because there's no screw there's lots of all around it there's a little rabbits to go or before you do this, you can try to put it right underneath and lift it up. See if you can pop those rivets out. If you can pop them open like that, that's fine. So you want it to gently just lift them all around. So it just cuts the top. You want to do this all around. So I'm going to go fast forward this part. I'm just going to, you have to remove this tape, but it's okay. So by itself, it will come out. You can use a little flat screwdriver too to do this. See this side is already coming up. So you don't want to bend it, you just want to be gentle with this one. In here, there's a two of them, so I'm going to knock one of them out, so it's easier for me to lift. Alright, pretty much this end is already loose. I'm going to just lift it up like this, work it around. And it will loose up the ones in there. There we go. Let's go ahead and remove the shield. So you don't want to bend it, you want to make sure it's straight, okay? Now all we have in here is that the backlight and the keyboard. So to remove this one, because this one has already been destroyed, so it doesn't matter how you remove it, you want to do the same thing, just lift it up from here, bring it up. Once you remove a little bit, you want to be gentle with it, but you don't want to damage the mesh on this side you don't want to break this mesh so you don't want to pull it up slowly bring it up in 45 degrees just be gentle with it just like this so this is your old cable with a backlight installed all right so there we have the mesh all right the speakers are going to be like a wobbling around so don't worry about it they are not screwed down because they have vibration pads on them. So first we want to present our keyboard right in the same mesh place to so make sure it just goes in nicely. So bring it over, put it in. And double check, make sure all the keys are in place. For example, this key on mine for this one is divided, it was divided in two in here so but this one is one piece as long as there was no plastic in between them i was fine by grabbing this one because this is a spanish keyboard this is a u.s keyboard with a u.s keyboard this shift is one piece so all right so now that we have the keyboard in here all we need to do is to put it in here align it make sure it goes in push through the rivets Okay, now we're going to grab the backlight. You want to place the backlight right through here. You see that tiny rivets right there? Okay. Uh, we're going to place this one, I forgot which way it was, because the fan is right here, so it goes like this. 
it will I have to fix the flex cap. So I'm just pretty much presenting it first on top to make sure that it's in place correctly. All right. Now we need to glue down the backlight right on top of the keyboard. We're gonna remove the adhesive. Make sure it goes in perfectly over. There we have it. Now, the thing that you can do, you can grab a hot station or soldering station while I pinch from the back side the line right in between them and I'm pushing the keyboard, I can just put a hot station on my uh, soldering iron and I'm gonna melt quickly over this one a little bit, it's just one second, I'm gonna pinch it so it just holds the keyboard right in place. So we're gonna do that and also once we put this back plate on top, we're gonna do the same thing, these rivets are gonna pop from this side and we have to melt a little bit and punch them down and so it can hold it in place, okay? But the whole entire back plate is being held down by these screws anyway, so don't worry about it too much. But it's an optional, but if you want to melt back down the plate, you can do it. I'm going to do a fast forward of this one right now. So let's see how that goes. So I'm waiting for my hot, hot station to, solder station to heat up. I'm just going to make sure which uh, rivet goes over which ones. So I know all those small ones, they don't need to come over this one. So I'm going to punch those in. So it is heating up. The one that I'm using is a T100. So I'm going to start from one corner. I can remove this one, but I'm going to leave it on. You can tape this one in momentarily. All right, just let's double check them. Okay, the keyboard looks pretty good. All the keys are coming out from this end. So I'm pretty happy with the result. So now all we need to do is to put the top cover, the metal bracket. All right, now we're gonna present the metal sheet right over. And we have all these cables out of the way. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the keyboard all around here. With this big rivet, we're just going to push them down, make sure it goes all the way in. And if any rivet is not going, you have to pull it out. Make sure there is no excess of plastic. Let's say, for example, in here there's a little bit of plastic around it. We need to clean those ones out, otherwise it's not going to sit flush. Just go around, make sure there is no extra plastic around it. All right, now we're gonna put it again on top. Uh, run the cable for the backlight. Bring it down, now I'm gonna push. Now it's going all the way in. So we're gonna go start from one corner and we're gonna touch it down. There is not enough plastic in here to melt. You can grab a uh, 3D printing uh, filament and you can melt it in there and it will be fine, but still the screws are gonna do the most of the job. So you don't have to worry about every each of these rivets. All right, we are mostly done. I'm gonna turn off the hot station. Iron station, I mean. All right, now we're gonna put this one for the last time, I hope, in place. Run the cables right through here. Now we're gonna flip it, double check, make sure everything is okay, setting up nicely. All right, so now we're gonna grab the motherboard. 
And before we put the marble, we gotta put the protective shield right on top. Remember, this protective shield has to go on top, so align it. There's a little tiny bumps that it tells you where it's supposed to go. All right. Once we have this one in here, we're gonna put the motherboard right, it's slider right underneath. We're gonna put the three screws for the motherboard. We're gonna connect the speaker cables right away. All right, we're gonna. All right, I forgot this one has to go under the motherboard, so you have to bend this portion out. So I'm gonna quickly remove the motherboard. It's just three screws. You don't need to disconnect the cable or anything like that. You can peel off this 3M tape right over here. You don't need to peel up all of them, just a little bit. And you want to just paste it there. And there we have it now. We're going to do it again, put the motherboard in place. We have the flex cable put here. We're going to put this flex cable right into here. There we have it. So let's go ahead and put the screws back for the motherboard. All right, so let's put the screw, the flex for the backlight. So it goes like this. As a little adhesive, we can peel these ones off. Put that one right there. Bring it like that. Open up the lock on the back. It slide it right through here. All the way in and lock it down. And leave it right there. Okay. Now we're going to put the trackpad cable right here. Now what we need to do is to bring the the screen. We're gonna put the screen right underneath, and we are gonna scoop this hinges right under. And we are gonna close this hinge first, and we're gonna slide the flex cable right into the jack from the back side towards the CPU. Just slide it right in there about one millimeter. We need to put the three screws for the hinges, the four screws, I mean. Then when one of the screws has to have a little grounding for the LCD. And one of the screws, you support, you're not supposed to put the screw because it goes from the hinge side down. That will be the last one. So we'll put the one beside here. Right there. Now, we need to grab this board right over here. We're going to place it right where it's supposed to be. Grab the screw for the board. Right in the middle. 
bring the cable connected right through the jack close the jack now we're gonna bring the hinge back down and we're gonna put the four screws on this side of the hinge it's not hard it's really easy to do honestly it looks complicated but it's way easy once you start doing it and if you have any question uh, can I can help you always in the comment area so we're gonna run the cable but before we do that let's go ahead and repaste so we're gonna grab ourselves a alcohol and workshop towel it's an isopropolic or isopropolic alcohol 100 percent and we're gonna swipe over the cpu and we're gonna remove all those thermal all thermal paste that is in there as long as you clean the dye you're fine you don't have to go crazy use a dry part grab the heat sink clean up the thermal paste on the heat sink all right grab your thermal paste i will use arctic mx4 which is really good put one drop right on the main die and tiny line on the secondary die now before we put the fan in there we're just gonna sit this one on top the heat sink goes over so the fan has to go down first so place the fan right in here okay and put the fan connector right into the jack just slide it right in there grab the heat sink align it and bring it down and put the screws for the heat sink always cross screw them make sure always cross screw them never going uh, clockwise or counterclockwise always cross screw each other because that way the thermal paste will evenly paste all over the cpu die and you need to put the two screws for the fan One right there, and one right over here. We're gonna run the cable for the Wi-Fi. We have to run through these grooves right here, tiny grooves, and bring it over. And all you need to do is just snap them in place. You can put a gaffer's tape or you can just leave it. The they're not going to pop out. They're pretty hard locked in. Just put a line on top and just push it down. I'll leave a little bit of always room in here on this side for the hinges if they're trying to open up. So it has enough room for them to open. right there okay next next all you need to do is to grab the battery bring the battery put it right on top it has to go under this cable wi-fi cable so i'm gonna grab this wi-fi cable slide it right underneath and put it right there You can just do like this, accommodate the cable the way you wish. Once you have it in there, now we need to put the one screw for the battery right in here and one right over there. So put one right by the fan and one right all the way to this side. Once you have this one here, now we're gonna put the jack right, make sure you pull this cover backward and align it straight over and push it towards the motherboard and bring the jack right on top. Now we're gonna grab the bracket right here. We're gonna align this corner and we're gonna bring it down. 
uh, we need to put the screws for this side. So remember the two black screws goes from the battery side in here to the mid and the chrome screws is halfway through. And even before finishing putting the bottom cover, you can power it on, make sure that it powers on or whatnot so. So I can just power it on and check the power on button is on the keyboard. So I turn it on and the light for the keyboard is powering on right there. So I want to see if I'm getting any screen. There we go. So we got the Asus logo, uh, which is loading the windows. It's working fine. All right, so I'm just gonna hard shut down so by holding the power button, or maybe I'll just shut it down normally. But I don't like shutting it down hard, hard shut down. So, and once it's shut down, we're gonna close the screen again. And now we, the last step down here would be to just grab the bottom, bottom cover, bring it over, and just snap it in place, and push down the corners really hard, make sure you hit those clicks, those are the clips that are getting locked in, and finish up putting in the bottom screw. Remember the short screws are the front end of the laptop, the long screws are the mid to the back end here, and the mediums are the side to side. Again, I hope you guys like this video and helped you guys out to replace your keyboard for your ASUS VivoBook 15. If you like it, click that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in a video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.